Bienvenidos y bienvenidas a este primer congreso sobre los avances en terapias de oxidación y oxigenoterapia en dermatología y patologías de la piel. Nuestro próximo ponente es el doctor en medicina Klaus Schusterader, especialista en medicina interna general y presidente de la Fundación Pisces en Suiza, con su ponencia Dióxido de cloro en piel y heridas. Welcome, doctor. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Klaus Schuster Eder. Thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to speak about chlorine dioxide and its uh, use as a local antiseptic in highly challenged environments. I want to start with how I became interested in chlorine dioxide and its unique uh, properties. Um, it's a very personal story and uh, It uh, relates to my work in several extreme countries uh, of the world. Uh, uh, in my early career, I went to Central African Republic and worked in a remote uh, bush hospital there. While uh, living there, I came down uh, numerous times with malaria, uh, which uh, stayed in my body. And after returning to Europe in 2007, I discovered a book uh, written by an man named Jim Humble and uh, in this book um, uh, he told uh, of how to treat malaria with the chlorinthic side sodium chloride water solution and um, I tried what he uh, suggested and I have not had malaria uh, since and uh, the fact that it did not get malaria again does not mean with certainty that it was the chlorinthic oxide sodium chloride water solution that solved my malaria problem but nevertheless this really caught my attention and inspired me to look more into chlorine dioxide one thing is for sure uh, chlorine dioxide has uh, fantastic antimicrobial properties at low concentrations diluted in water it is both safe and uh, very effective so I believe it can revolutionize the treatment of wounds in many ways uh, and it's uh, also simple to produce and uh, this is of uh, especially great uh, value uh, in uh, very poor countries where western medicine is often too expensive or simply not available and uh, chlorine dioxide fulfills all the important criteria needed for Uh, successful implementations for low-income countries where a medical product must be safe, simple to use, cheap and effective. Of course, we have the same criteria in the Western world. I think it's even of more importance in low-income countries where the educational system very often does not work. The Western medical mindset simply does not function uh, in a lot of third and fourth world countries where a person might only earn a dollar a day. It is important to understand that uh, such locations require a very different approach and therefore different treatment options. I also want to point out that there are many false narratives in the media discrediting chlorine dioxide as something that has no place in medicine. And I think this is completely wrong. Um, However, uh, we need to do proper honest research uh, uh, to meet all the criteria that are needed to uh, be able to certify uh, and get all the authorizations uh, uh, for a medical uh, product. Another factor that Western minds don't think about is that field hospitals in poor countries often need to find the creative ways to cover their expenses. And the governments don't usually provide support in a lots of places out of the bigger cities. So these hospitals sell medicine. It's actually their only income. Uh, there is still income with or some income with surgery, but selling medicine is the main income for most hospitals. And if it isn't cheap, the patients can't pay. They can't afford it. And if the hospitals are not able to sell medicine, no money is generated to pay salaries. I would like to show you a few pictures now from or where I worked in Central African Republic. Uh, it is a typical bush hospital. Uh, this will help you to gain a better understanding of the medical challenges that exist in places like this. 
So people are living in uh, small houses uh, uh, where, of course, there's no electricity. And uh, you see here a picture in the hospital of the maternity ward. Here is a place uh, where women give birth. I assisted many times just with a little lamp. There's nothing else. Gloves you have, and a little lamp, but that's all. They're almost, um, there's almost nothing in the hospital, not even mattresses for the beds. And uh, uh, this um, is the ward for the people diagnosed with tuberculosis. Here things are already a bit better. You can see this clearly. There's a difference of the roof, uh, which uh, is in better condition. So this is uh, actually the building where those people stay who have had a little bit of money. And uh, this is where we washed our hands before we did surgery. Here we prepare everything uh, for surgery. It's a place where we prepare all the tools and etc. Disinfectant and, and so on. So this is before we go to the surgery theater. As, as I said before, it is important to understand why we need uh, safe, simple, effective and cheap solutions. And uh, without understanding this, uh, it um, we really, we really um, uh, lack an important uh, element uh, to get the bigger picture. Now, I would like to show you some wounds. Uh, we saw these kinds of clinical cases basically every day in the Bush Hospital. This is a lady who had a C-section six weeks earlier. A day after the C-section, we had to take out the uterus because of the massive necrosis of the uterus due to post-surgery infection. Here we have a young man who was stabbed with a knife into his abdomen. We had to fix the intestines and make sure there was no um, internal abdominal bleeding. I think chlorine dioxide would also give um, a lot of help and would be very helpful in preventing any kind of post-surgery infection. So, this is a 40-year-old woman after an accident which led to a complete detachment of her skin and subcutaneous skin tissue of the anterior upper part of her left leg. And the following picture is going to give you a little bit of an idea of people coming in with wounds, people who got shot and came to the hospital for treatment. Chlorine dioxide also has great potential in the treatment of burns. I also want to raise awareness that um, all these pictures I have shown above, that's certainly the daily uh, experience in the Bush Hospital, but we have a huge, huge public health problem worldwide with war trauma. And this is a, an issue which is very often not discussed at all. We talk about malaria, we talk about HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, uh, COVID-19. Uh, I talked a little bit about um, uh, wounds, but wounds in the context of war trauma are extremely frequent. And um, in 2019, I had the opportunity to work with the Afghan military. Uh, countries affected by war have a tremendous need, unbelievable need for safe, uh, simple, effective and cheap solutions. And there are also other treatments, tools that have great potential and need to be researched further. In one case, we provided a special harmless tincture for the hospital ward of war traumatized uh, veterans. And uh, the nurse came to, to show us what it did to these uh, veterans. And she was so happily surprised to see that the patient slept uh, through the, the night uh, so much better than they do usually. And we also should keep in mind that wound healing is a field of medicine that also has an important psychological component. Uh, we should not underestimate the effect of an open, unhealed wound on the psychology of a person. Wound healing is a complex issue uh, and offering solutions that can be used without a prescription will empower patients and their families in a, in a, in a wonderful way. Chlorine dioxide water solution has the potential to help millions of people. I have no doubt about that. We should do everything to do the science needed to make this available for all people in the needy areas of the world. I have, um, uh, I would have more pictures that are not easy for most of you to look at and I save you from that experience. But I want to mention also a very brilliant man I had the pleasure to get to know. 
this is Professor Sholtan Nostitius from Technical University in Budapest. He has done a tremendous amount of research on chlorine dioxide and in 2013 he published an article titled Chlorine Dioxide is a Scythe Selective Intermicrobial Agent. This article reveals that chlorine dioxide is size selective and does not do any harm to human cells within safe concentrations. This is a new concept that has not been established in medicine. I think it's a very, very helpful and interesting concept. While it's basically saying that it kills all the uh, small microorganisms like viruses, bacteria and fungi within milliseconds, uh, but it does not do any harm to human cells uh, within the right concentrations as human cells are much bigger. And uh, I'm very, very excited about the possible healthcare products that can be produced as a result of uh, this research. If anybody has got a question, please do not hesitate to contact me. I thank you very much for your attention and I wish you all the best. Muchísimas gracias, doctor, y a ustedes les agradecemos su atención a lo largo de las ponencias de este primer congreso sobre los avances en terapias de oxidación y oxigenoterapia en dermatología y patologías de la piel, donde hemos contado con un gran equipo de profesionales expertos en tratamientos dermatológicos, con los últimos avances sobre terapeutas de oxidación oxigenoterapia y ozonoterapia. Pueden acceder a todas las ponencias a través de nuestra página web revolox.com donde estaremos encantados de poder atender cualquier cuestión sobre las soluciones y avances que las terapias de oxidación y oxigenoterapia aportan en dermatología y en patologías de la piel. Muchas gracias por su atención.